While the world may currently be watching another country go through a name change, it was last year in 2018 when we saw another nation change its name. I should have covered this when it was relevant, but being topical has never been my strongest point. This was of course when in April of 2018, it was announced that the nation of Swaziland would change its name to Eswatini. Eswatini is a relatively small landlocked nation nestled between Mozambique and South Africa. Despite being so small, it has vast mountains running across its eastern edge. So wait a minute, landlocked, small and mountainous? It's easy to see why people get the names of Swaziland and Switzerland mixed up. More on that later. Starting in 1906, Swaziland, as it was called at that time, was ruled over by the British as one of their colonies. However, this wasn't forever as in 1968, Swaziland became an independent nation once again. In fact, the name change coincided with 50 years of independence from the British. But what about that name? Well, the initial name of Swaziland anyway. If you're a long time viewer, and if you aren't then don't forget to subscribe, I'm sure you have a fair idea as to what this name means. We see the land suffix in country names so often and the previous part of these names usually tell us who that land belongs to. In this case, it is of course the Swazi people, also known as the Swati, with Swazi land meaning the land of the Swazi. So where exactly did the name of these people come from? Well, luckily we actually have a clear answer to this for once. The name comes from the name of one of their former kings, King Mswati II, who reigned from 1840 to 1868. Mswati II is considered to be one of the greatest kings in African history, claiming more land for Swazi land than anyone else, even land they have since lost. It was the name of this great king that his followers and the nation became named after. Yet that was Mswati II. Fast forward 150 years to 2018 and we have the current king of Eswatini, Mswati III. Mswati III took over the throne at just 18 years old and hasn't built quite the same reputation as Mswati II. His luxurious and polygamous lifestyle has left many of his subjects not too happy to call him their king. Nevertheless it was in 2018 he announced that the country would now be called Eswatini as opposed to Swaziland. This name changed happened for a couple reasons. One, as we mentioned earlier, he was getting annoyed about the Swaziland Switzerland mix up. And secondly, he was not happy that the former name of Swaziland was a mixture of Swazi and English. Many African nations took their former native names after colonial rule in them had ended. King Mswati wished for this remnant of colonial rule to be gone, and now it is. Luckily, however, we don't need to look too deeply into this name, as this name too means exactly what Swaziland meant too, the land of the Swazi. Yet, how was he able to change the name of the country so easily? As we are witnessing now with Greece and Macedonia, big changes to a country like this aren't usually so easy to push through. Also, this Portuguese coverage of the whole Greece-Macedonia situation actually used my video to help explain the situation. They didn't credit me or ask my permission, it's cool but kind of weird and um, um Anyway, the reason the king could so easily change this is due to the fact that Iswatini is Africa's last absolute monarchy, which means that he and he alone has more or less complete control over anything in the nation. If he wants to change the name, he simply can, without having to seek approval from any government bodies or his subjects. Of course, however, while he may have been able to change the nation's name easily, that doesn't mean that actually doing so will be as easy. It's safe to say there's a lot to get done when having to change a country's name. Think of all the places that name will be changed, the currency, airlines, well, their one airplane, signs at borders, literally everywhere the name is written will need to be changed. Luckily however the name Swaziland doesn't appear in their national anthem so that's one thing they can keep. Eswatini was suggested by Simon Zhu and thanks to their suggestion they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of Eswatini. Every Thursday all my patrons get to suggest somewhere that will be covered in these Tuesday videos so why not support name explained on patreon from one dollar on up for your chance to become a name explained patron saint too. Name Explained depends on awesome people like yourself to donate a small amount on a monthly basis to help keep the channel running, so a huge thank you to all my patrons who do this. Even just $1 a month helps out in a huge way and earns you weekly Name Explained patron exclusive rewards. Thank you.